Hello and welcome to our season finale Q&A episode for Frightfully Forgotten. But first of all, what are we drinking? Ghosts of Mars End. Mm, mm, yeah. I, I take it as a Mars in beer. <laughs> you betcha. Before we get started, we'd like to give a shout out to some other YouTube channels that uh, are just kind of getting started or have been around for a while. But, you know, some channels you should definitely check out. 80s Horror Central. Mm -hmm. His reviews are very fun and funny <laughs> and he keeps them quick and short and to the point. The Hap Horror Show, they're kind of like the American counterpart for us. There's two buddies <laughs> chilling out with a couple of drinks and talking about movies. Rainbow Fright, remember to check out her channel. And of course Shadow Alley Productions. Adam from Shadow Alley finally shipped us a mask. Uh -huh. Last year's Q&A he asked us if I sent you guys a mask would you make a horror movie short? And he lived up to his end of the yeah, bargain. Yeah, I didn't think he would. Uh, he sent us this cool alien type mask, which he's actually gonna be manufacturing and start selling. You may be getting a horror movie short coming your way in the next year or so. Fuck YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Very good name. Yeah. He asked us, what was the most nostalgic movie that uh, the two of us... Kind of uh, share. Yeah, kind of share between us. We did cover this in one episode, but uh, we'll answer it again. And that one for the both of us together was The Three Amigos. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. That, that goes way back to when I had first moved to the city and almost instantly we became friends and that was like one of the first movies that we can both remember watching. Yeah, kind of bonding over. Yeah, yeah playing and everything, yeah. jumping off the couches and stuff. And we do have a Tales from the VHS Vault episode on Three Amigos, so make sure to check that out too. That's right, that's a pretty fun episode too. Fuck YouTube, but <laughs> also like to know, what's our favorite horror anthology movie? That's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. I'd say the original Tales from the Crypt that is one my is, favorite. That one is pretty good. Because all the stories are really solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also that one uh, from the 80s uh, in, with Emilio Estevez called Nightmares. I actually haven't seen that one. Oh, that one's yeah. really good. That one's really good. And I remember seeing that on TV way back, too. Um, Trick or Treat is actually very good, too. I really like that one. I was going to watch it again this Halloween and just didn't get around to it. There's so many movies to watch. Right, right, right. And I haven't seen that. Oh, yeah? No. That's good. Check that one out. <laughs> we both have some movies to watch. <laughs> That's right. Fuck YouTube also asked, uh, what's the most overrated horror movie from the 80s? that we both uh, can think of. We can we, we, we agree on this one wholeheartedly, too. That's, that's right. It is Poltergeist. It has got to be the most overrated. Yeah. I can't stand Poltergeist. Oh, uh, neither can I. <laughs> I tried rewatching it again recently, and it's like, it's just a fucking Star Wars commercial. Like, it's just uh, George Lucas and... Yeah. Um, Steven Spielberg just jerking himself off and, <laughs> and poor Toby Hooper had to kind of be stuck in the middle, it seems. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, like, even the the effects in that movie, they're great, yep. they're top-notch, but they don't, they don't hit the mark. Like, they, they, you know, you're seeing, like, oh, there's a lightning flying around <laughs> and all that shit flying around in the room and stuff, yeah. and, and it's just, it seems to fall flat. Yeah. Like, for me, anyways, it's like... <sighs> It's not all that scary. No, it's, it's... not scary. And I, I, I'm, I, I don't like haunting movies that are so over the top where it's beyond the, the point of being believable. Yeah. Like when you talk to real people who say they've encountered ghosts or some sort of haunting in their house, they don't say that, you know, like, the house is all blowing up and stuff like that. No, it's just <laughs> subtle things that are scary, you know? It's, exactly. You know, you're not people getting sucked into TVs and shit like that. Yeah. It's just, too unbelievable it's to make it scary you know? yeah it's got to be believable to make it scary because you got to think oh that can happen to me dave anderson would like to know what is the best horror comedy that pulled off both the horror and the comedy aspects and again that's a very tough one and there's two to come to mind my favorite horror comedy of all time is Return of the Living mm -hmm. Dead. Yeah. Um, not to say that it's scary. No movie has really scared me all that much. But I think it just pulls off the horror and the comedy both perfectly. Balances it perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Another one that comes to our minds, too, is Evil Dead 2, right? It's kind of like a symphony, almost. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It is. They did a really good job marrying the two together, right? I remember you saying you thought that when you first saw... Evil Dead 2, you found it scary when you were a little kid. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. So then, yeah, that, that pulled off the horror, too, for you as a kid. Yeah. And yeah. the comedy. He also wants to know if there's a horror genre we can't stand. 
personally, I'm really not a fan of like the whole torture porn thing, like the hostile movies. Yeah. I didn't mind the first couple of saws, but they were a bit more like cerebral than just gore. Also not a fan of like the whole like ring and grudge style uh, movies. This, this doesn't do it for me. I don't, yeah. I don't find it scary. The whole torture or the whole snuff film yeah. kind of deal, I'm not into. There's a movie called Martyrs that I watched. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. I'm not in, I wasn't into that yeah. at all. Yeah. It's just way too much for me. The next one is by uh, Mr. Jack O' Lanterns, and uh, he asked us something that was non horror related. He asked us, uh, uh, what was our favorite TV sitcoms? We don't want to just kind of like cop out. <laughs> right, because it is. Because it is a cop out. <laughs> but I'd have to say, personally for me, it's Seinfeld. Just because the, the, you know, the rewatchability. You, can, mm -hmm. you know, you can watch those episodes a gazillion times and still find them funny. Exactly, and they're so relatable yeah. too, right? Uh, if I were to pick something else besides the obvious, I would say Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah as a second, and also I love the monsters too. I love Kirby Enthusiasm too, but if I if I would have to pick another one, it would probably be MASH for me. I, I love MASH, it's great. How I mean, many seasons did MASH run? Uh, like nine or Eleven. Oh, eleven seasons. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Alda, his hair is all dark and he's all <laughs> young in the first season. Then when you go to the last one, it's all gray and he's all old and haggard and shit. The Korean War lasted for three years. Yeah. This isn't three years, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he also asked us what our favorite Stephen King adaptation is. That, again, is a tough one. Yeah, that's a good one. As far as Stephen King movie that I can just always keep watching and watching and watching and never get bored of would have to be Christine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my favorite Stephen King movie. Uh, not to say it's the, the most faithful adaptation. It isn't. No, it's no, just no. my favorite Stephen King movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I'd have to agree. Uh, it, it depends on how you look at it, though. Like, what's our favorite? Sure, it's Christine. What's the best? Maybe The Shining? Yeah, uh, even though, again, it's 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 really not like the book, but no. it is a great movie. I just, we, we, yeah, we watched it a year not too long ago. <laughs> uh, and uh, after rewatching it, you just realize like how much of a masterpiece that movie is, regardless of how faithful it is to the source material. It's exactly. just a good fucking movie. Yeah. That made-for-TV miniseries of The Shining actually wasn't all that bad. I kind of didn't <laughs> mind it besides that fucking kid. I was I just going to say that. I can't stand that kid. <laughs> well, that's a perfect example of yeah. kids ruining things, yeah, right? You better yeah. fucking make sure you got a kid yeah. who can act. Yeah, I know, yeah. A bad kid actor ruin a movie easy. Stand By Me is yeah. fucking great. Green Mile is great. Shawshank Redemption. Oh, yeah. I'd say some of the better movies that are based off of Stephen King books are non-horror. So I think I'm going to pronounce this right, I'm not sure, but Cody W1, <laughs> who also has a YouTube channel, and he's kind of really into all sorts of things. He kind of reviews horror movies, talks a lot about Doctor Who, huh. and his question, I guess, would be more for me, because Justin didn't watch Doctor Who. I'm not um, a huge fan. I like the old stuff, yeah. but, you know. Uh, he would like to know what our favorite classic Doctor Who stories are. And I could talk forever about this, but if I were to kind of pick like an uh, uh, era, it would definitely be the Tom Baker era, which, <laughs> yeah. which, which I love. For nostalgia purposes, I'd say his last season, that whole like East Space trilogy, and then Legopolis, and then when he finally regenerates, and then going into like Peter Davison's first couple of stories where he's going through all the regeneration trauma. That's kind of like my favorite nostalgic <laughs> Doctor Who stories. I like the drinking stories from Tom Baker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> More so. Yeah. The next one is from uh, Ron Moore, and he asked us uh, who would win in a drinking contest between Adam and Jason. Well, Ron, uh, I don't know who the fuck this Jason <laughs> guy is, but you know what? You're out. <laughs> we can't answer that question because who's Jason? <laughs> <laughs> don't know, don't care. Ferret78 would like to know, what is our favorite David Cronenberg movie? And again, I'm going to cop out <laughs> right? and say The Fly, um, as far as a movie that I've watched so many times mm -hmm. and will always watch, and just the rewatchability of it's great. If I were to choose one that isn't going to be the obvious answer, it would be The Brood. Yes. It would be like my second my second favorite Cronenberg movie. That would be mine too, yeah. I love The Brood. Yeah. Oh man, it's just, <laughs> it's so good. Like that, that end where she's all giving, yeah. or she's all pregnant and yeah. gives birth to that weird yeah. thing. Yeah. And like, 
Oh, fuck. Oliver Reed in it, too. Yeah, yeah. The famous uh, boozer. Yeah. <laughs> our favorite boozer. Him and Tom Baker, our favorite boozers. <laughs> Grumpy Andrew from Grumpy Andrew's Horror House, so check out his channel too. <laughs> Quite sure he talked about those early Cronenberg movies, and he did, does mention that Brood is like the first one that kind of really is a really good movie. One of the reasons is it finally has a really good lead actor in it. Right. Which is Oliver Reed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yeah, that, it's just these shitty Canadian guys. Exactly, right? yeah, they feel so generically yeah. Canadian before yeah. that. The next one is from uh, Sean Martin. And he wanted to know, um, if we were to build the ultimate horror movie, who would we pick to do the directing, uh, the music, and who would be the actors that would uh, star in it? And what monster would be the, the main monster in it? That's, yeah. a, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. William Friedkin would probably be the best director for yeah. such an undertaking. John Carpenter would be almost on par. Almost, yeah. But we would pick him to do the music. The creature from the Black Lagoon would, would make a good kind of monster to have a comeback and, mm -hmm. and get like a, a remake or, or something like that, you know, to be featured again. Because everyone else has had their shot. Yeah. Actors? Oh, well, of course. Tom Atkins Tom Atkins starring. would have to be in it. <laughs> Bruce Campbell would have to make a cameo. Yeah, possibly like Ted Raimi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Adrienne Barbeau, uh, you know. In the horror <laughs> she, movie, she, she hasn't been in... She'd be old, but she'd be like more of a grandma figure. <laughs> Danielle Harris would maybe oh, yeah. get in there, because she needs some work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Gonzalo Valdez would like to know if we're familiar with director Barry J. Gillis <laughs> in his infamous, infamous... Infamous? Bad, bad movie <laughs> from 1989 called Things. By chance, I happened to watch Things a week or something before we got these questions, so it's just by complete chance. Oh yeah, I just got lucky. <laughs> that has got to be one of the worst fucking movies I've ever seen in my life. But it's so bad where it's... You can't look away. It's like a car crash. Where, like, <laughs> yeah. I we finished. I finished watching it like the whole way through, and it's like, it was like, what was that? Like, oh my god! Like, how did this get released? <laughs> it's one of those things. It's so bad where you're like, this has to be intentional. Mm. And I tried to do some research on it. And there's no clues anywhere of anyone saying, yeah, we we're making a bad movie on purpose. It's like this is supposed to be serious. Yeah. It's like, oh man, that makes it even worse. <laughs> The next one is from uh, Sophie Baker, and she wants to know all about my pug, Bailey. Bring her on. Let's bring her on. <laughs> She's sleeping just over there. And snoring. And licking. <laughs> so there's Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is Bailey. She's been in a few videos. <laughs> How old is Bailey? Ten. Ten, eh? Yeah, she's getting up there, poor thing. In doggy years, what is that? 70, I think, isn't it? Time seven? Jeez, 70. Yeah. You don't look like you're no 70. <laughs> so there she is, yeah, and she's a real sweet girl. And I'm sure she'll make an appearance in some future episodes. Oh, I'm yeah, sure. and some outtakes, too. Yeah. So the next and final question is from 80s Horse Central and a few other people because yeah. a lot of people kind of ask the same question, so we kind of just blumped it into one. Specifically, 80s Horror Central wanted to know what movie scared us as a kid so much we had to turn off in the middle of it. That's right. I remember vividly Children of the Corn. That's right. Not uh, finishing yeah. that movie past that diner scene. Yeah, yeah, and then we we started watching it again, and then remember where the kid gets hit when he walks out from the cornfield? Yeah. And we turned it off for good. Yeah, and I didn't watch that movie again for years and years <laughs> until I was older. Oh man, that soundtrack is fucking yeah, killer. Yeah, it's scary, yeah. Oh, we also did a VHS Tales on that too, if yeah. you want to click the link above. And we also talk a little more about that in the review we do of Children of the yeah. Corn as well. And on top of that, a lot of other people asked, like, just what was a movie that genuinely scared us? Yeah. That terrifying movie. And, you know, that's, that's a really tough one because I don't really find movies all that scary. No. I love horror movies, but not because they're scary, because they're entertainment. There's been moments in movies that used to scare the shit out of me as a kid, like right. in Stand By Me when they find the body. That part would always scare me because he looks so dead. Another part used to scare me too, and again, it's not a scary movie is in Phantom of the Paradise. Well, two parts where he gets his 
face crushed in the record press. And then at the end where he gets unmasked and you see how disfigured he is, that part used to scare me too. His eyeballs all kind of hanging out. And right, right. This big hole in his face. That whole movie creeped me out. You feel so bad for him. And I, I remember like the first time I saw it. It's like, oh my God, like what a poor guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh man, and to have all this... And the thing I think that did it for me was the teeth, and they yeah. pull his teeth out and put yeah. those silver ones yeah. in. Like, yeah. Not much in the way of slashers or monster movies scared me, but anything supernatural or to do with ghosts scared the shit out of me. A lot of TV shows really scared me, like a lot of the ghost uh, anthology shows. Like where true they, stories. Or yeah, yeah, like there was... Uh, Haunted Lives with Bobby Mackey's yeah, Music it, World yeah, with that yeah, yeah. die game. <laughs> <laughs> that guy reenacting it. And then over here in the, in the washer. In the uh, wash basin. I put my hands in the wash basin and wash my hands. <laughs> and then very finally, the guy's all like <laughs> wrecking the bathroom, like trying to reenact what happened to him. The, tr the trash can came in very finally. Yeah, yeah, he's all smashing everything up. Those kind of shows were scary. I remember uh, In Search Of, depending mm -hmm. on the episode, would kind of creep me out, depending on what the content was. And of course, you know, Unsolved Mysteries yeah. was, was creepy, depending on the episode. Those Nostradamus shows where they're always predicting the end of the world. Yeah. And... <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> those are fucking scary. Nostradamus, those reenactments yeah. where he's got that ball. Yeah. He's got his <laughs> book or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I remember when my dad would like kind of like, oh, there's some Nostradamus thing on, let's watch it. They were always on. I'd kind of be like, mm, I'll go upstairs and play or something. Yeah. I don't feel like listening about the end of the world right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so depressing. It's, it's funny because like all of those shows banked on the fact that the world was going to end at the year 2000. Yeah. And when it didn't happen, we never saw another Nostradamus <laughs> yeah, yeah. show again. Yeah. <laughs> I have that Nostradamus beer. He's all predicting on the front of it. Predicting too. that you'll get pissed drunk from <laughs> drinking. <laughs> I think that's it. That's that pretty good, yeah. I think that brings an end to our season finale Q&A. We actually get to relax and hang out after the video shoot because we usually <laughs> shoot like a bunch of videos at once and then by the time that's done, it's like, okay, well, gotta go now or yeah. whatever. So we can actually hang out now and have some drinks and watch some horror movies. Exactly, and usually like, whoever's place it is, like if we're at my place, I'll usually drink more, and then Adam, oh, I gotta go now. It's like, oh wait, yeah. I have one more drink. It's yeah. like, no, 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 I, I gotta go. I gotta drive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other way around too. Yeah. Like, you know, so we're gonna enjoy ourselves. Yeah, so until next time, and until next year, keep drinking. Keep drinking.